Okay, in today's lesson, we're going to talk about external ports and cables. And the first topic is video ports and cables. Hopefully you've been reading along and you are just listening for key points at this point. So one of the big ports we have on our computer is the video port and it connects a monitor cable to the computer. And there are different types of video ports or connectors. So we have DVI, which is digital. We have DisplayPort, RCA, DB15, BNC, RJ45, Mini HDMI, and DIN6. Now, DVI and the HDMI are becoming popular and standard on a lot of computers and laptops since most of our displays today are HDMI or I should ready they are actually um, high definition so a lot of our if we're using a VGA cable we're not really going to capture all of that quality so it's best if we use an HDMI uh, type of connection so cables transfer the video signals from the computer uh, to the display devices. And there are different types of display devices. We have high definition multimedia interface, which is the HDMI cable, DVI, video graphics array, VGA, component RGB, composite S, S video, coaxial, and ethernet. So depending on the monitor, when it was made, it might have uh, one of these connectors but HDMI is one of the ones that is starting to become the standard. So we have different types of cables and ports so that we can connect devices to our computer. We have serial ports which transmit one bit of data at a time. A telephone cable which is the RJ11 it's used, used to connect a modem to a telephone outlet. They are not uh, on a lot of computers today since we are doing a lot of our network connecting via the RJ45 Ethernet. USB which is a standard interface for connecting hot swappable peripherals devices to a computer. Some devices can also be powered through USB. We will talk about USB later and the standard. Firewire is also a high speed type of device and some devices can be powered via firewire port. And then there's parallel cable which is used to connect parallel devices such as a printer, a scanner, and can transmit 8 bits of data at a time. Um, one of the things that um, is important today is a lot of our printers are now connected via USB or they're networkable or wireless network. Some other types of interfaces uh, are the SCSI port, which can transmit data at rates of excess of 320 megabits per second, and it can support up to 15 devices uh, via a SCSI chain. And then there's the good old network port, which is the RJ45. Uh, we would think of this for an Ethernet. Remember that for a RJ45 type of connection, the furthest apart that a computer could be from the router is 100 meters or 328 feet. That's really important to remember. PS2 ports connect keyboards and the mouse. The PS2 is a 6-pin mini DIN female connector and a lot of keyboards and the mouse, mice, whatever you want to call them, are now being connected through USB. And then there's usually audio in ports on your device so we can hear sound, add speakers, uh, usually they're input and output devices. And then there's a video port which connects your monitor cable to your computer. So all very important ports on our computer. Different types of input devices. So input and output devices expand what we can do with our computer. Sometimes they will allow us to print, 
sometimes they will allow us to play a video or a movie sometimes they will allow us to connect multiple computers so the first thing we're going to talk about is input devices so a mouse and a keyboard input we think of those right away a KVM switch is an input device and it allows us to connect multiple keyboards or I should say multiple computers with one keyboard and mouse and monitor gamepad and joystick are used for gaming computers we could add a digital camera or a digital video to our computer they're usually connected via USB or Firewire some kind of biometric authentication device such as um, a, a fingerprint reader or something that would read a uh, retina scan from your eye. Touch screens, so on tablets and smartphones now have touch screens and then scanners are another way to input information into our computer to scan documents to convert paper files to electronic files. And then output, so we see pictures of three major types that we're used to a CRT monitor, an LCD monitor, or a projector. So CRT stands for cathode ray tube. Uh, they're not being made anymore. They were prevalent, um, but now LCD and LEDs are a lot cheaper and um, take up less space. Uh, LCDs are commonly used with laptops and projectors, and usually they have two forms, active matrix and passive matrix. And then we have LED, which is a light emitting diode and displays an LC display, LCDs display that uses LED background lighting uh, to display. Now, um, and they use a lot less energy. And then there's something called OLED, which is organic LED. And this display uses a layer of organic material that responds to electrical stimulus to emit light. So in, in, in most of these, in LEDs and plasmas, um, there's some kind of gas or some kind of liquid in there that um, electrons are reacting with. Some other types of output devices, printers and fax machines. So they allow us to um, print our electronic documents. Interesting today, a lot of people are not um, printing as much. They are using email and the internet to send information so we're saving the environment as I mentioned earlier scanners create electronic ver file versions of paper documents and later on in one of the chapters we'll look into scanners into detail and then speakers and headphones are also output devices and they're for reproducing audio signals So, some more on output devices, monitors and projectors. I mentioned plasma a little bit, and it's another type of flat panel monitor. And then there's a digital light processing technology, DLP, and that's used in projectors. And usually they um, project light through um, some type of crystal lens and with usually LED in it so you can present on some kind of screen. Monitor resolution refers to the level of image details that can be reproduced. Higher resolution settings produce better images. Usually monitors and that have higher resolution are a little bit more expensive. A couple things to consider when we're talking about monitor resolution is pixels, dot pitch, contrast radius, GO, the refresh rate, refresh rate, interlace, non-interlace, horizontal and vertical color, aspect ratio, and native resolution. So there are things that you want to understand. So when you're in your reading, make sure you, you understand what those things are. And this will be the end of today's lesson. So um, in the next topic, we will talk about selecting um, computer cases and power supplies and other aspects of the computer. All right. Have a great day. Thanks.